Well, the man who could be the DA's next leader joins us live from our Cape Town studio to talk about his new role and the plans he has for the party to make sure the DA remains the main opposition party in the country. Mr. Stenyazen, good evening. Thanks very much uh, for your time. Among the many things you said at the uh, Cape Town Press Club today was that last week's events, and I quote, dealt a significant blow, close quotes, uh, to the DA. You went on to say that the departure of a leader, a chairperson, and a metro mayor, and the manner of their leaving dealt a blow to our cause. Now, those lines caught uh, my attention because since Wednesday, I, I, I sensed from uh, DA leaders and spokespersons a reluctance to actually acknowledge the fact that damage has actually been done by the events of the past week. Well, I think it would be completely naive uh, to assume that damage has not been done. Of course it has been done. Uh, and anybody who leaves the Democratic Alliance is a loss for the party. We should be attracting people, not repelling people. But I think that the circumstances of that departure need to be looked at very carefully. It was on the back of a report that had been commissioned uh, by the, the leader of the party at the time, Mr. Maimani, uh, uh, by a panel that had been handpicked by him. And uh, it made some findings, and they didn't make for easy reading. Uh, and as a result of that, the Federal Council interrogated that report and uh, made some resolutions on the way forward. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Maimani and Mr. Mashaba and Mr. Trollope made personal decisions uh, to leave before an early Congress next year. And that, those decisions must be respected, but I certainly don't celebrate anybody leaving the DA or turning their back on the party. We need to be attracting more South Africans to rally to the banner of hope and change that the DA offers. You don't think uh, that uh, the whole thing could have been managed better so that there are no intended consequences because people are reading um, from these events what uh, they want to read and that might not be so good uh, for the party. Well, of course, and of course we would love things to have been different. Both the Federal Council and the Federal Executive unanimously resolved that uh, the leader should remain in place until the Congress next year in April uh, and would be free to contest that Congress if he so wished. Uh, obviously, it's a personal choice that's been uh, made, uh, but it is also a consequence of the election. Uh, the election result was a disappointing result for the DA, and I think it is right that the party embarks upon introspection about what went wrong and what needs to be done to fix that and can focus on making sure that those problems are addressed and that the democratic project in South Africa is sustained. South Africa needs a strong opposition. It needs a party that's growing and getting stronger. Uh, and it can only do that if it takes on board some of the harsh realities uh, of uh, the failures of the past and starts to fix those going forward so that it can put its very best foot forward heading into the local government elections uh, in 2021. But is it fair, though, to pin um, those mistakes and problems on uh, the one individual that is Musi Maimane? Well, unfortunately, that's a reality of politics, Vuyo, uh, like it is uh, in, in political parties the world over. When you have a disappointing election result, the buck, unfortunately, stops at the leader's door. And certainly, Mr. Maimani was not responsible for everything that went wrong in the campaign. I think there were many other individuals and failures of the organization uh, that led to the result. But the reality is that the buck stops at the leader's door. And that's why you see in the world over when you have bad election results, those leaders generally step down uh, soon after the election uh, to take responsibility and allow the party to rebuild. We didn't want that to be the case in this instance, but that has been the choice that Mr. Maimani has made. Uh, and I think it's a courageous choice on, on his behalf. Well, I mean, you were a leader, I mean, in your own right as the uh, lead, as the chief whip of uh, the party in parliament. So where were the rest of you? At least Arthur Trollip uh, had the courage to actually take responsibility. But what about the rest of you? Well, of course, um, and I was also part of, of that leadership uh, in parliament, uh, where I think we've done an excellent job in holding the government accountable and ensuring that the DAs 
uh, foot, uh, best foot was put forward there. I think where the broader problem came in was around uh, the, the campaign itself. And yes, there was, role, uh, was a role played by individuals uh, on a variety of levels, particularly in that particular campaign. Uh, and yes, there was a, a fallout. As you know, um, I had to stand down last week as the chief whip of the official opposition in Parliament with Mr. Maimani's departure. But what we can't do is just simply walk off the job. There is a bigger job of work here. The democratic project of building an alternative to the ANC is bigger than individuals. And it is a project that cannot be abandoned. South Africa needs the DA. Uh, we need a strong opposition in the country. And if everyone was just to walk away from the project after the election, I think South Africa would be poorer for it. So you agree uh, with uh, Tony uh, Leon's panel that uh, the single most important factor in shaping the DA's current circumstances is a failure of effective leadership? Well, I think that was one of the findings of the report. It pointed to a number of other failings uh, in the various chapters in that report. I think it is an honest and frank assessment, and I think the DA should in fact be commended for not only having an honest and frank assessment after an election result like that, but also being open with our voters and open with the people of South Africa about where the problems have lain and what we now intend to do to fix them. Uh, it's no use sitting in a heap after a poor election result uh, bemoaning what had happened unless you set out very clearly to fix what went wrong uh, and to start to move forward so that you can rebuild, renew and grow again. And that's certainly the direction which the Democratic Alliance is now heading uh, in the coming weeks, months and years. We'll get into that in a moment. But Athol Trollip believes that uh, Tony Leon and them uh, overreached, <coughs> especially considering uh, the fact that it was Musi Maimane in the first place who asked for a review. Well, the terms of reference that were written for the panelists, and I'm again point out that the panelists were hand-picked by the leader. The terms of reference were given to the panel by the leader, and it, it asked it to look into the leadership of the party. Uh, you can't curse the people who are tasked with the task uh, when they come back and report on what they were asked to do uh, and say that they had overreached. I think that that is un, uh, an unfair assessment, and it's certainly not something that was shared at the Federal Council meeting over those uh, two days a fortnight ago. Uh, when the panel were present to answer any questions. Uh, I certainly think that the panel produced a report perfectly in line with the terms of reference that were given uh, to them by the leader. And I think the party has to take on board uh, the findings of that particular panel if we are to uh, fix where the problems lie and start to rebuild, as I say, and grow going forward. Now, you have an interesting take on what has happened uh, to the DA in the last while. You said in your speech uh, uh, to the Cape Town Press Club today, and I quote, the DA stood like a big, blue, wobbly jelly at the center. With nothing holding us upright, we wobbled to the left and wobbled to the right, buffeted by political winds, and so on and so on. Now, w what informs your characterization um, of the DA's problems like? the way you did? Well, I think that the analogy of the jelly was to describe very clearly the fact that it was very unclear to voters in the last election what the DA was about, what it was fighting for, and on whose behalf it was fighting. I think there was a lot of message confusion. And when you added to that the mix of parties on both the left and the right in this last election who were very clear about what they were and what they were fighting for, uh, we lost market share and we lost voters to both the left and right, precisely because we were ambiguous about what we were standing for. And I think that what, that's why I said further in the speech that it's important that the DA rediscovers its spine and starts to stand up very proudly for the values and principles that have sustained this party over the course of decades, through even some of the most darkest times in South Africa's history. We've had setbacks before, we've had leaders walk off the job before, but it's the values and principles that have been the bedrock uh, of every recovery uh, that we've been through. Uh, and I've no doubt that it is our values and principles that will guide us in this particular instance through these difficult waters. 
Well, as you said, uh, we need to take, to set out, you said today, with uh, spellbinding clarity what the DA is and what we are about. What is the DA about? Well, I think we're about forming a non-racial, democratic, liberal democratic alternative to the ANC in South Africa. That is the broader democratic project. What we can't have is allowing South Africa to just simply fall into a totalitarian hegemonic state with a dominant ANC. There needs to be an alternative in the country. We need to stand up very clearly for the elements of liberal democracy that would define uh, that type of system going forward. Uh, freedom uh, of speech, freedom of association, respect for the rule of law, uh, and respect for the rights of the individual. Uh, we believe that it is individual rights that are the touchstone of South Africa's future. And only through empowering and unleashing the power of the individual are you going to be able to see meaningful change. If we ascribe to groups in South Africa, uh, group rights, group think, uh, I think it's going to take us backwards. And we've seen that policies that rely on that don't work. Uh, in fact, they have the opposite effect. And so we need to set out very clearly those policies and the alternatives to the ANC. Not just saying how bad the ANC are and how bad things are under the ANC, but how good they could be under a democratic alliance government. Um, we'll run out of time, but I have to ask you um, this. I mean, as you told the press club today, you have to take into account uh, some realities. And one hard reality is that uh, things didn't end well with uh, the only black leader uh, the DA has ever had, and now another white man wants uh, to replace him. Well, I think that uh, if one looks at our drive for non-racialism, it shouldn't matter what color you are in South Africa, provided you are fighting to ensure that all South Africans across all communities advance. Uh, and so I don't believe in this instance you necessarily have to have a black person speaking for black people. I think Helen Sussman showed very clearly under her uh, tenure in Parliament that you don't have to be black to speak up for black South Africans uh, in Parliament. And so I think we should obsess less about the color of people's skins, but more about what they can contribute and the difference that they can make, provided they're willing to get their hands dirty, uplifting the poor, ensuring we have an inclusive growing economy, an education system that uh, prepares our children for the challenges that lie ahead, a safe communities, and an opportunity for people to find work in South Africa. I think those are the things that animate South Africans. And the party that can offer those in a future-focused way, I think is a party that's going to make headway, regardless of the color of who the leader happens to be. So you don't think that another white person leading the DA reinforces that view uh, that uh, whites are still in charge in the DA? And if you think that is a myth, uh, do you not think that uh, perhaps uh, uh, the way to, to do or, or you could have made a bigger contribution uh, by perhaps uh, putting your efforts towards ensuring that it gets the best black leader that it could get instead of availing yourself for the position? Well, as I say, I don't think we should obsess about the color of people's skin. I happen to think I am a good candidate. Uh, I believe I have a skill set that can help drive the party forward and get more votes in for us. I think it's very obvious if you look at the DA's electoral track record, um, the, the, we were able to get significant uh, votes from black South Africans under both Tony Leon and Helen Ziller, precisely because we were able to hold true to the values and principles. And South Africans, regardless whether they were black, white, colored or Indian, looked at the DA and said, this is a party that's fighting my corner and fighting for a better future. This is the party that I trust with my future and the future of my children. And this is a party I'm going to get behind. And I think if we focus on those policies and building that alternative, I think that we'll be able to rally and congregate more people in that rational center around the Democratic Alliance and start to change the electoral landscape here in South Africa. I don't think that the color of a person's skin should determine the nature of the contribution that they can make. Uh, I think that, uh, that that is 
uh, frankly, a unconstitutional view to take, particularly if you believe that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity. Looking at the DA benches in Parliament, we are by far the most diverse party represented yeah. there. We're certainly not monochromatic, as many of the critics would like to say, and I venture to say that, in fact, it is our opponents who are monochromatic uh, in Parliament. Okay, Mr. Stenhazen, thank you very much for your time this evening. John Stenhazen, who wants to be the DA's next leader.